In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Endor Bunker from Return of the Jedi. Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Endor Bunker from Return of the Jedi. And as you can see in the left hand corner of the box here, you do have the 40th anniversary of the Return of the Jedi logo there to say that this is part of that theme celebrating the 40 years, which is awesome. So let's take a look at the box before we crack it open and take a look at all the insides. Okay then, so here is the box. And as you can see on the front there, you've got a really nice image of the Endor bunker with some graphics of the Forest of Endor in the background there. You've got some troopers, vintage collection, stormtroopers, and the biker scout there. And you can see the speed bike there. I have done a review of that. I will be comparing the two figures within the review as well. The one from the speeder bike and the one that comes with this set. As you can see there in the top right hand corner, you do get a figure inside the box on a card and it is the Endor Rebel Commando in disguise. So on the bottom left of the box, you can see the Endor bunker built with the figure outside. And as I mentioned before, you've got the 40th anniversary logo in the top left. Top of the box, you've just got a few images there of what it can do. So you've got the side panel there for Han Solo, and there's also a little bit there for R2-D2 to control. And there you can see it's showing you that the doors move, basically. And you've just got Endor Bunker and Kenner there. So on one side of the box, you have an image of the Rebel Commando in disguise standing outside the bunker, which is pretty cool. And on the other end of the box, you have another image of the bunker with some biker scouts outside it. On the bottom of the box, there's nothing but warnings. And the reverse side of the box there, you have the Vintage Collection logo, which is pretty much the only difference between this side and the front side of the box, apart from this attention logo there that is ever so slightly different as well and you get a load of gumph down the bottom you can also see that that is an import sticker right there on the box all right then so that is enough about the packaging at the end of the day it's the vintage collection it always looks great great image on there so uh, let's open up the Endor Bunker and check it out. And in case you were wondering before we do build the Endor Bunker, I just wanted to show you how it's packaged within the main box. So you can see that it's all got these separate little compartments, which is helping keep this vintage collection card back intact. Let's just see how good this is. I've got a slight wave on there, but apart from that, it looks pretty good. The figure is unpunched. And uh, yeah, it really makes me not want to open this, but it wouldn't be a proper review unless I did open the figure. And that is exactly what we're gonna do in a minute. We're gonna open up the figure and also compare him against the biker scout that came with the speeder bike. Apart from all that, you also get these Kenner style instructions, which basically tell you how to put together the indoor bunker. And there's a the reverse side of it there for you. Okay then, so here are all the pieces laid out in front. And with the aid of the instructions, we are gonna be able to build this thing. And it makes it quite easy for you because at the end of the day, there's these little markings on there. It says L1 inside, and you know that L1 is gonna to have to go on this right side of this bottom piece right here. So I'm gonna put it all together on camera, but I will speed up the process so you can see it a lot quicker than it is actually gonna take me to build. All right then, so here it is, all built. The bunker, the Endor bunker, it looks awesome. I'm liking the moss effect on the top and everything and around the edges. I think it looks great. It's gonna look really, really good on a shelf, this, with lots of figures around it and what have you. What I would say is that it is a bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I know they've done the video on the Hasbro Pulse channel where they compared it to the Power of the Force 2 version. I don't have the Power of the Force 2 version to hand at the moment, so I can't give you a comparison of the two in this video. But take it from me, this thing is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And what also does surprise me is the depth of this piece here. You're going to be able to get a lot of figures in there. You're going to have no problem getting Han, Leia, and uh, R2-D2 in there and what have you. No problem whatsoever. It looks really, really good. Now, there isn't a huge amount of play features on this. Essentially, it's just going to be the two sets of doors and the control panels on the side. So if we just quickly turn it around so you can see those doors. You see the doors on the back there, you've got these bronze ones, which open like so, and then you've got the second set of doors, which will be the front set of doors, which have that fastener on there. 
So those open like so, and you can see that that is actually quite a tight fit and they just go back together like so and they do close up nicely so there's no sort of light coming through there at all. Um, obviously if you're trying to work it from the front it's a little bit awkward I, I guess you could do that and then like that that's no problem then you could have like half one open or half one closed or whatever you want however you want that you see the light coming through there. Looking at the sculpting work and the detail in general of the Endor Bunker, I'm liking it. I think it looks good. It looks pretty much screen accurate for me. You've got all this sort of moss effect which has been sculpted on. I know a few people thought it would be a good idea if that could be removable. It is quite a sort of softish plastic. I wouldn't really want to be taking that off um, if you wanted a clean bunker, but I think it looks good on there anyway. You've also got some moss etc growing around the bottom of the bunker. I would say that it hasn't been applied quite so well as it has on the top. Uh, it is a different color green. There is a very slight overspray on mine, but it's nothing that you can see unless you're looking up really, really close. Um, as I say, I just think the sculpting work on the top moss is a lot better than it has been done on the bottom. But you know, just standing there on a shelf, it looks absolutely fantastic. And as I say, if you're gonna get like a diorama of some figures and everything, this could be your centerpiece for that scene. I think it looks really good. Now it's actually going to be quite difficult to show you the control panels on this because they are sort of hidden away on the side there and it's difficult to get the light in there and also to keep the camera focused. But essentially what you've got here is a little hinge which opens up there and there is a control panel there and it is painted. You've got some red and green buttons in there. As I said, very, very difficult to see with the camera going in and out of focus. It's, it's difficult to get the camera in there, it really is. But that little doorway is awesome for Han Solo to try and hot wire the doors. And then down here on the bottom, you've got this little thing that slides across like that, which then shows you the port for R2-D2 to plug into to try and open the door for himself. And that just gets covered again. It's on a little axle there, it spins, and that's just a nice little extra that they've included. So as I mentioned, it is fairly basic in terms of what it can do. I don't think it's really supposed to be a playset necessarily. It's one of these diorama pieces basically that they seem to be like doing these days, very much like the Tanti 4 hallway. It's for you to set up your figures essentially and create a little diorama. I'm sure my son is gonna rob this off me at some point. He's gonna want this because as a child, I'm sure he's gonna really enjoy playing with this and you know creating the scenes from Return of the Jedi. And I must admit, if I was 10 years old and I had this, I would think it was absolutely amazing. You know, it really does look the part. And if you've got the ATST and the speed bike and all the figures to go with it, which we do have most of to go with this scene, then I think it would make a really awesome play piece as well as a display piece. Just to give you a quick look at the top of the bunker with those sculpted pieces there, and you can really see the moss and everything. So, you know, I think it would be pretty cool to get some Ewoks up there or what have you. Um, and essentially there's the back again, really, you know, as I say, there's not a great deal to it. Um, as I say, you really, really just want to display it from the front with your figures in there. And uh, let's do that now. I realize this is a little scene that I've just quickly put together with some figures that I had to hand. Of course, you could make it more of an Imperial scene if you wanted to. If you had lots of biker scouts and lots of stormtroopers, you could make it a lot more Imperial if you wanted, as I say. Uh, but as I say, these are just a few things that I had together. But just to give you a flavor of what you could do with it when it's on your shelf. All right, then, so that's about it for the bunker itself. Let's take a look at the Endor Rebel Commando in disguise. All right, then, so here is the card back, the Endor Rebel Commando in Scout Trooper disguise on that beautiful Return of the Jedi card back with the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi in the top left-hand corner. Once again, very similar to the biker scout that came with the speeder bike. It is unpunched, beautiful unpunched card. And I'm liking the image there. It is a little bit blurry because that is a blink and you'll miss it shot from the film. And uh, this is basically Nick Sant um, in canon as far as I'm aware. I'm pretty sure all those things about Rex, I think that was all Dave Filoni saying it could be Rex, but then I think he backtracked on it and eventually said, that you know maybe Rex was part of the Battle of Endor but this isn't supposedly Rex this is supposed to be Nick Sant um, there you go he is VC 272 in the line and there you go some of the other figures on the back of the card back we've got Admiral Piet to come the phase two clone trooper to come as well can't wait to get hold of those and for Hunter and for Cassian Andor Aldani with the wrong boots 
All of the others I think I've reviewed already, or these two anyway. And yeah, Starkiller, that's just a, a repack. So there you go, beautiful card back with the orange name pill and the orange panel behind the figure. And we're going to take him out of the packaging right now and compare him against the Biker Scout figure or Scout Trooper that came with the speeder bike. All right then, so here is the figure out of the packaging. But which one is it? Can you actually tell the difference? I tell you what, if you handed me both of these figures together at the same time, I would not be able to tell you the difference between the two. I wouldn't be able to pick which one is the Trooper in disguise versus the one that came with the speeder bike, the actual biker scout, scout trooper, whatever you want to call them. Um, that is because the helmet that they've used for the biker scout has been sort of made a little bit bigger to make it more accurate to the film. All the previous scout troopers we've had have always had a much smaller helmet and this one is much, much more accurate. And because of that, they're able to make a removable version of it that fits over the head. So I'll tell you which one it is right now. It is the one on the right. And if we just take the helmet off, you'll be able to see that portrait underneath like that. So here is the helmet. And it's a sort of rubbery plastic. You can see there, you can squish it, but it does hold its shape very well. So if you were to squash that or move it around, it does bounce back into shape. And I think the detailing and paintwork on that are really, really good. I can't see anything wrong with that whatsoever. And as you saw, it fits very, very snugly over the head of the figure. So that's good. So now really we just want to take a look at the face sculpt of this figure. You can see there he's got that sort of black uh, hood stroke balaclava type thing over the head. And he has his white beard. But there's the head sculpt once again with the vintage collection head sculpts. They're getting better and better these days. And this is no exception. I think it looks great. So there you go. So you can, uh, you know, reenact that scene where he is basically, you know, got his arms behind his head or whatever he's doing at the time. So, yeah, if you want to see a detailed review of the actual figure itself in its entirety, then you'll probably want to watch my speeder bike video where I go through all of the articulation of that figure, because essentially the only real difference between this one and the Scout Trooper is the head. And the head on this one is, let's just pop it off, is on a double barbell there, you can see. So let's just see if you can put the Scout Trooper helmet on. So this is the Scout Trooper. Let's just pop that head off. Pop that head on, and there you go. Exactly the same figure. So that just confirms it really. The only difference is, is the head and they've just made a removable helmet, which looks pretty much identical. So the Scout Trooper head, the new Scout Trooper head, you can see there, it hasn't got a fake head in there or anything. It is a completely molded helmet. It is hard plastic. So this one is a soft plastic, but as I say, they look identical. All right then, so just to finish up with the review, we have a shot there of the Endor bunker with a couple of bike scouts chilling out on their speeder bikes, waiting for the inevitable rebel attack. So as I said, I think this is a really nice display piece, not too much playability with it and what have you. But at the end of the day, I'm an adult collector and this thing will look really good on a shelf with a load of other figures posed outside. So I'm really actually quite happy with it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Drop a like down below if you have. And we shall see you on the next one.